Hi everyone, I'm Nathan with TheEbookReader.com. For this video, I'm going to give you a review of the Kobo Mini. So uh, this is Kobo's first 5-inch ebook reader. Uh, they have some other ebook readers, of course, the Kobo Touch and the Kobo Glow. They have 6-inch screens, so this is just sort of like a quick comparison between the screen size. Obviously, it's uh, quite a bit smaller. I was trying to think of something to compare it with. Uh, here's my wallet. It's like a little bit bigger than my wallet. It's about the size of the screen. Uh, so yeah, it fits in uh, most pockets. Obviously, it's not going to fit in smaller pockets. It's very light, very portable, and easy to take with you everywhere. So uh, it's got a basic uh, streamlined design here. We just got a USB port down there for charging and transferring content. There's no micro SD card uh, or front light like the other Kobo e-readers. It's just got a power slider up here on top and an LED indicator. Uh, these backs, they come off. Kobo sells interchangeable backs. Uh, they're not real easy to get off. Um, it sounds like I'm breaking it every time, but uh, it comes off okay. And then you can get uh, different colored backs and slip on there. There's uh, several different colors. Let's go ahead and fire this up and show you what we've got. Uh, basically, it's the same exact software that's on the Kobo Touch and the Kobo Glow. We've got the same exact sort of features. Um, we've just got it on a smaller screen here. Uh, so the library view right here, we've got all our different categories for uh, organizing contents for books, news magazines and uh, previews and then shelves you can create custom shelves to organize your content and then here on the home screen it shows your recently t uh, read titles here in this uh, mosaic uh, and so the other links down here we've got like the Kobo shop right here we can find links uh, so it's kind of cool they got the free book section on there most e-readers kind of make it hard to find free books but uh, so that's front and center and then Kobo has some different features for uh, uh, these reading stats and awards for reading life so that's kind of something uh, exclusive to Kobo uh, so this discover section up here it just sort of uh, lists some recommended titles that you can go through um, just sort of based on your history and what you've uh, bought before and read before and then uh, so let's go ahead and uh, show you the settings menu here up here if you hit this little icon uh, it'll bring up the settings menu from anywhere uh, so if the same sort of settings menu if you're reading a book, this sort of thing pops up when you hit that corner there. Uh, you can turn Wi-Fi on and off from here, it tells you your battery percentage, and then we can launch the full settings menu from here. We've got some different options. So uh, there are different languages supported. Uh, I got them all listed in the written review uh, over on the ebookreader.com. You can check that out uh, for the additional info. Down here in the extra section, we have a couple of uh, different features. We've got a sketch pad. Basically, it's just uh, you can do a little on-screen sketches. It's not real accurate, you just see it often cuts off a section. Um, and then you can save these, it gets saved as a ping file. And then it will get saved to your home screen once you save it. Uh, let's go back there and to the extras menu. And we have a couple of other things, we've got a number puzzle game and then we've also got the web browser. So the web browser is nothing special but it does work okay for downloading ebooks. I tested some places like feedbooks and Bain's free library. I was able to download some free ebooks that way and the web browser does work for that. I couldn't get it to work for Dropbox. Uh, some reason the links wouldn't react. Um, so let me just show you kind of how it works here. We've got this little zoom dial down here. It doesn't have pinch zooming. The Kobo, uh, Kobo Z readers don't support pinch zooming. So then you just come in here and you type in your search. It'll automatically uh, pop up the dictionary. Sometimes you have to press more than once I've noticed with the uh, web browser. Then you can go ahead and type in your search. So the web browser, it's uh, just pretty basic. Uh, Scrolling is pretty smooth. If you go ahead and uh, scroll right here, it actually does the partial refresh. So it gets stuck in that state and it works pretty well for zooming, or for scrolling, I mean. Um, like I said, it doesn't have pinch zooming, so we use these little arrows down here. It also doesn't have any kind of article mode like some e-readers have. Uh, so it's just sort of a basic web browser you can use for uh, downloading ebooks and such but it's not going to be something you're going to want to use for a lot of online web reading um, unless the pages are just formatted just so but one thing I've noticed with the web browser is text is generally quite uh, faint as you can tell it's not very dark like the heading there was dark but the actual text is pretty gray instead of black so uh, the whole web browser experience it's just sort of a, a basic web browser that's uh, useful for downloading ebooks and not a whole lot more Okay, so let me go ahead and load up an ebook here and show you the e-reading features. So this is one that I downloaded with the web browser, in fact. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you. It's a little bit different than Kobo's. A lot of times Kobo's ebooks have spaces between paragraphs, like the side-loaded book. Um, it has the, um, obviously, it has the indented paragraphs. As you can see, uh, a lot of times it doesn't fill the whole page down here with side-loaded ebooks, I've noticed. It does the sort of same thing with Kobo's books, too, but it does it more so with side-loaded books. Like, you can see there's just so much wasted space right there. Uh, that's one of my... 
uh, main cons with this, the Kobo needs to definitely add a full page mode because this whole page number thing down here takes up a lot of space. But if you go ahead and tap on that, we get the options. Um, we can go ahead and bring up your table of contents, and we've got the annotations, and the definitions here. We've got the translations as well. So if you highlight a word, you can get the translations, or you can just use the uh, dictionary right here, or the uh, keyboard right here, and enter the word. And we've got some different translation dictionaries here. So you can install other dictionaries as well. As far as uh, navigating, we've got the table of contents and we've got this little dial right here. And you can skip chapters with the first arrow here and then the, uh, obviously the other arrows go to the beginning and end. So the text adjusting options on the Kobo Mini are a strong suit. Uh, you can actually load in other fonts if you want. We've already got a good healthy selection in here. So sometimes uh, side loaded EPUBs, they don't change font, but uh, this one does okay. And sometimes side loaded EPUBs don't change the line spacing and stuff too, but it just sort of depends on the book. Um, so we've got the adjustable font size. There's a whole bunch of font sizes. Obviously with the smaller screen, it's going to be a lot more suited for smaller fonts unless you want to turn the page constantly. So it's definitely more suited for uh, smaller fonts, so obviously you're going to want to have better eyesight for something like this. I find it best around... I mean, obviously that's pretty small right there. But there are a lot of font sizes, so you can fine-tune it just how you want. And then we've got the line spacing and margins as well. So that's one uh, really cool thing about Kobo Z-Readers. They do give you a lot of options for the uh, layout. We've got justification. You can go left justified if you don't like the weird spacing. So some of the other stuff we've got in here, we've got... If we go into the advanced section, we can actually... Uh, customize exactly how dark you want the text so we can adjust the font weight and the font sharpness so if you want really bold text you can just ramp it up a lot there so it makes the uh, font a little rougher when you go with the bolder text but I mean uh, if that's something you want you can go ahead and apply that and then you get a uh, bolder font. Uh, some of the other settings we got in here we can go adjust reading settings or oh, you can add it to your shelf too from here um, we can share stuff on Facebook uh, there's some different zones you can set there for tapping on the screen for turning pages and um, we've got the partial page refresh setting so you can customize it to one through six pages. Um, I really don't like partial refresh because it makes the um, text a little bit rough at times. So like if you're turning pages, like sometimes you'll see a spot where like the text is a little lighter than it is on the rest of the screen. I kind of don't like that so I usually just keep it on full page refresh. It's just sort of your own personal preference. Okay, so it has the usual on-screen functions. If you hold down on a word, you can access the dictionary, you can do notes and highlights. Uh, so as you can see, the little dictionary bubble pops up right there. We can also add a highlight or a note to the word. So as far as the library view goes, you can actually view by book covers and by list. I kind of like viewing by list because then we get to see uh, the format. We get this additional information. If you come down here, you can view the uh, book cover, which shows six, by, six covers at once. And you can scroll through here, and you've got the little page dial right here, and we've got some different sorting options. So the Kobo Mini supports a few different formats. I'd say uh, EPUB is definitely a strong suit. Uh, I tried a different, few different formats like uh, a CBR file or yeah, a comic file here. And there's not a whole lot of options for zooming. So obviously with the 5 inch screen, comics I'm saying are pretty much out. But obviously it's not impossible. But if you want to go ahead and do a lot of zooming, um, you got to go down here, hit the little zoom icon. And then obviously we can zoom in a lot farther. But as far as this tiny screen, not going to be exactly a pleasant comic book reading experience when you pan around the screen like this. And it also has a landscape mode, so if you hit the little adjuster icon right down here in the far corner, it'll switch it over to landscape. So PDFs have landscape as well. Regular ebooks don't have landscape mode for some reason. PDFs, not going to be so good on the small screen. I always get people asking about PDFs, so I'm just going to show you briefly just to uh, hear you folks. So there's no pinch zooming or anything, so obviously uh, the whole zooming factor is not great. There's no reflow. There's basically just the zoom dial right here. And you can't actually turn pages while you're zoomed in, so and it sort of shows you right there what part of the page you're on. And then, like I said, you can switch over to landscape. But uh, given the small screen, I really think PDFs are suited for a different device. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this review. Uh, check out the ebookreader.com for the full written review. I have some additional information on the Kobo Mini on there. Um, so thank you for watching and subscribe if you like these videos.